everyone and welcome to an intro to World Creator 2 Extras. I'm Tyler and in this episode, I'm going to take you through the creation of our third biome, the Desert Biome. But first, we're going to start by creating this biome in a new World Creator file altogether and I'll explain why afterwards. So let's jump right into it. Here in our new World Creator file, we're just going to keep the terrain size as the default 2K. And maybe we can just randomize the seed value here a couple times to maybe get a little something that we want. So all we're going to do in this world creator file is basically just focus on adding the filters to creating our desert biome. So let's go ahead and jump in and do that now. So go up to filters, add layer and add a filter. We're going to go to the effects category and then we're going to choose distort. Go ahead and then add and close. Now the reason we're choosing the distort filter is to add some curvy irregularities to the dunes shape. Sand dunes are rather wavy or snake-like from a bird's eye perspective. Now this distort is a bit much so let's dial it down a tab. And we can do that by lowering its length to say somewhere around 56 as well as adjusting the scale but I think the scale is okay here. And you can see it's distorting the landscape just subtly enough so that we can get that wavy effect. We might even decide to go back and randomize the seed a little bit more to kind of get the effect that we want to display on our actual terrain. Now what I want to do with this filter is broaden the level strength sliders down here to include a little of the extra detail. So for step level four, I'm just going to increase to say 15. For the step level 8, I'm going to increase this to 35, and 9, I'm just going to subtly increase this to around 15 as well. And these are some subtle changes, no doubt, but it helps to shape some of the dunes and sand details in the next filters. Now let's go ahead and add another filter. Select Add, and this time we're going to select the Dunes category, and select the Wavy Dunes, Add and Close. And as you can see, this filter is basically going to add crisp, tiny waves in the dunes surface. If you pay close attention to these certain types of dunes, you will see the tiny surface striations caused by wind and wind stack up. This filter helps generate that subtle wind effect. Let's just drop its strength to somewhere around 50% and let's increase the density slider here to around 0.6 should do fine. This density slider is basically going to increase the amount of the wavy striations that you see or decrease the amount of wavy striations that you see and how prominent they are. You can see when the density slider is all the way to the left that they are not that prominent. And if you increase it, say, all the way to one, they become really prominent, but we're just going to make them ever so slightly subtle yet still contrasting. So somewhere around 0.6 should do us pretty fine. And to reference the before and after of this filter, let's hide it and then unhide it. And you can see it's basically taking the distorted shapes, smoothing them out, adding a little bit of a crisp ridge, and of course, adding those wavy striations. Next, let's go ahead and add another filter. We're going to go back to the dunes category and this time we're going to go ahead and select the regular dunes filter right here in the middle. And the dunes filter does a great job on its own, but in combination to these other two filters, it smooths out the first two filters while maintaining our bulk shape. You can see just on its own, if I hide and unhide this, it's going to add a little bit more shape to the dunes overall. Let's go ahead and increase its strength to be a little bit stronger, say around 85% should do us fine. Hide and unhide to test, and I think that does pretty good, but again, I'm going to change the filter level strength sliders here in the bottom. Right now, all of these strengths are set to 100%, but I want this effect to be a little bit stronger in the higher end, so I'm gonna make sure that all of these sliders just gradually slope up. We're gonna start with level two and then just type in 27 as our first value. We're going to decrease the level step three to 60%, and then starting with level step five, I'm just gonna gradually start increasing these values so that they have a nice gradual increase. and our highest value to be 150%. And with testing this, you can see that we're getting a really nice crisp ridge line here that's still subtly smooth, just the way you would expect in a desert-like situation. 
Now we have one more filter to add. So let's go ahead and go to add. This time we're going to make sure that we're adding it under the sediment category. And then we're gonna choose sediment complex. Now sediment complex is a form of sedimentation that presents buildup upon itself. Let me zoom in here to showcase this a little bit easier. If you were to select the sediment filter here on the left, as you can see here, the sediment filter will add sedimentation in all of these shallow areas, but the sediment complex filter will add buildup in the sediment in congested areas like as you see right here. I like to use this filter here because the sand in a lot of cases will have this sort of build up naturally, but that doesn't mean that there won't be areas in deserts where you may just want to do the regular sediment because having the wavy dunes like this could be subtly what's necessary. But for our case, I'm just going to stick with the sediment complex and let's add and close. That way we ensure that we get this buildup that you see right here on the edge between the slope and what's relatively flat. We can make this transition between these two areas fade ever so slightly by just lowering the general strength down to say around 80%. That should do us pretty good. And let's also lower the length from 50 down to around five. A higher length means you are essentially infilling more sedimentation into the carved spaces while a shorter length provides smaller areas to infill. A shorter length also adds more contrast to the sedimentation which is good in this case in order to highlight the buildup itself. And you could increase or decrease the quality of this sedimentation but I feel like somewhere around 10 or more is just fine. And in our case, we're just gonna keep the default 10 value. From here, everything is pretty much set to go. So now we basically have the filter stack and all of the settings set up for our desert biome. But why did I create this in a different world creator file instead of doing this in our main project file that we've been working in? Well, the simple answer is testing and optimized workflow. Look at it this way. If you're creating a multiple biome landscape and you aren't quite sure which filter combinations to use, it is a good idea to create multiple project files, each meant for a different biome, and basically test and try which filters you like to use in each of those files. Then once you have your biomes designed and figured out, just like we do here, you can recreate those filter stacks in your main project file. This could save you some time, especially if you have a really large project file or if your computer isn't quite powerful enough to test these multiple filters on one file with multiple biomes. I almost always test my biomes in a separate file like this for the sole purpose of really understanding the biome and what filters work best for what I'm after. Then I just quickly re-implement that filter stack and copy their settings over in the main project file. With that explained, and now that we've figured out which filters and settings we want to use in our main project file, I'm going to jump on over to our main project now and go ahead and add these filters and their settings in the appropriate order. So here in our main project file, you can see that I've already gone ahead and implemented all of those changes here in our desert biome. I went ahead and painted in our area mask using all the same techniques and brushes I used in the previous video. And we can look at that by hitting our heat map icon here. You can see the red area here is the area that I painted in our heat map. We could also go up to the areas tab, select desert, and that is also represented right here under our areas option. I've also gone ahead and added all of the filters that we tested as well as made sure that all of these settings and filter level strengths that we used in the test world creator file are all applied identically here. So to see what this looked like before, let's just hide our desert layer. And you can see this is where we were before and our desert biome isn't looking that great here, but with the filter stack that we tested, it is looking far more convincing. However, the desert filters we have here don't have enough base material to work with in order to create the dune mounds that we showed in our test file. That's because our original terrain shape that we used that we can see whenever we hide this filter stack is too flat for the filters to create that snake-like formation that we did in our test file. So let's go up to the texture tab here. Go ahead and turn on the base sketch that we're used to seeing. And as you guessed it, we're going to go to the surface tab, base sub tab, and we're going to again start reshaping our desert to kind of match up with some of the wavy sketch lines that we originally drew. 
Now this doesn't have to match one to one, so just go with the flow of how the filters guide your shaping. And be sure to take your time with this because you want it to feel really organic and wavy and not feel like it's forced and stiff. So with that, let's just speed through the reshaping of our Doom biome. And there you go, everyone. We have successfully completed our next biome shape while showing you an optimized workflow to test your biome first. We've even gone through and reshaped the biome to kind of play closer to the original sketch that we made in the very beginning. We have a pretty nice transition between the other two biomes and this biome to kind of play on a more natural transition, but you can always go back and reshape and re-smooth some of these edges if you want. I really wanted this edge right here to be a little bit more crisp between the mountainous region and the desert region. While this transition right here from the hills to desert, I wanted it to be ever so slightly smooth because when we texture this, these areas here are going to bleed in together just a little bit so that it looks more like a natural element. And as well, you can see that I have gone through and reshaped it so that we have this really cool curvy S shape here, almost snake like that goes through each of our elements of our design. And that pretty much covers it with the desert biome. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.